Hello, I'm Gloria Starr, International Manners and Etiquette Consultant, working all over the globe for the past 20 years. This is an exciting time in the industry as there's so many people that need advice and we have a great lesson on glasses, stemware, and crystal today. So I have a selection of glasses out in front of me and many times at events you will be faced with lots of choices and you want to definitely know the right choice. As a savvy business person, understanding which glass to pick up, what goes in it, and how to hold the glass are all very important, significant things that you will want to know. So let's start over here. This is a red wine glass, but could also be a white, depending on how heavy the wine is. That's going to be a good choice. Now, this glass is not an expensive glass, and it is quite a heavy glass. The lip and rim of the glass is also quite thick, and it's going to sound different than a true crystal glass will. And also the stem is a little bit thicker. So let's use a comparison between these two glasses. This is a much thinner rim and a thinner stem, and this is actually a Rydell, R-I-E-D-E-L glass, and it is the finest stemware glasses in the world. So you can tell by the difference of the sound as well as the rim and the thinness of the stem. Both of these glasses could be used for the same thing. However, this is a $5 glass and this is a $75 glass. Big difference. So you want to take care of your uh, service and glasses and keep in mind when you are washing these, I like to wash them by hand and I do not recommend soap because soap will leave a film on your stemware and it doesn't really come as clean plus the taste can uh, just give you a little off taste on the wine or the beverage that you're drinking in these glasses. So same purpose, red or white, and usually the bigger the bowl represents it's a red wine glass. So over here I have a very large bowl for this glass. So this could also be for red. So usually a lighter red is in a glass perhaps like this or even like this, where a heavier red might be in here for the bowl. And you're going to swirl the wine and let it breathe. And then as you're sipping it, you'll have three different areas of your tongue that bring out the flavor and a different bouquet to the wine. So on the tip of your tongue, the middle of your tongue, and then at the back of your tongue, just before you swallow. So these could also be your red wine choices. Now, I have used this for a Pinot Noir, which is a lighter red than a Cabernet, and that is a nice glass for that. Also, this type of glass seems to be more suited to women. They tend to like the daintier glasses, unless they are a large bone person themselves and they're going to really enjoy the larger glasses. So, over here, we could be using this for a nice white wine glass and you'll notice the extra special detail in the crystal part there and that's a nice summer wine in a white that would be uh, quite light versus a medium light red in this glass. Then we have here a martini glass and usually you'll notice that most glasses that you'll be drinking from will be clear and that's to allow the color and the clarity of the wine to show effectively in the glass. So a nice glass and no clinking of the glasses but just raise the glass, look at the person and smile and that's giving you the toast with those guests that you're dining with. This is another lovely glass and can also be used for a light red wine. A great shape to that glass. That's one of my favorite glasses there. And I'm a medium sized person, so I like medium sized glasses. And as I said, a much larger bone person is going to go for the larger glass. And that can be held like this for red wine because you're not 
drinking it really cold from the refrigerator, and that's warming the wine a little bit, but you don't ever hold white wine like that because it's chilled and the warmth of your hand is going to warm the wine a bit. Another one of my favorite glasses is this one, and that's a beauty. That can be used for both red or white wine, and I love the length of this stem. It also is a very nice look when you're uh, creating a masterful table setting with your flowers and your, uh, your tableware and well as different glasses. And the glass on the furthest outside from your dinner plate is the glass you drink from first, and then you go in towards you and the glasses are set in that order so depending on how they're set is going to govern and give you the clue as to not only what you're drinking but what you're having in the way of food throughout the different uh, segments of your meal so glasses stemware crystal and all of those things make something very beautiful if you're serving uh, a lovely meal and you've decorated with flowers and candles, make sure that the candle is not directly in front of that person. And ideally, I also put the bouquets in between where the guests are seated. So you can do a short bouquet of 8 to 10 inches so the person can actually see over the bouquet, or you can do very tall bouquets where they're very thin through here and narrow and then all of the bouquet, not unlike this, is going to be very abundant up top. So everything that you can possibly learn not only makes you a good host but also a terrific guest. These I consider essential skills in our so very casual world. You will be on the most wanted list as a guest because you know to arrive with a gift. You might bring two bottles of wine instead of one, or if they don't drink, you might bring something else such as beautiful music, a scented candle, or perhaps a book if you know that they read. A few tips and lots more to come. Gloria Starr, the international manners and etiquette coach of choice.